Okay, today we want to speak to you about the Toldot Yeshu, which is uh, an anti-gospel. Many, many centuries ago, trying to vilify and parody uh, the Mashiach. But you know what? The, 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 the joke is always on the devil in the end. Because, friend, I want to tell you today from the book of Haggai, the book of, about the uh, genealogy, because as I just showed you here in this uh, uh, genealogy, uh, both in the uh, genealogy of Miriam, Bat Dovid, and in Yosef Ben Dovid, you have Zerubbabel. Now, this man is mentioned in the last verse of Haggai, and he's called God's signet ring, his Amen. hatam. And uh, you, you got to know what that means. In other words, look, if I'm writing you a check and I make it payable to you, when I put my signature there, that's my signature. That's my authority that these are my funds and I am transferring them to you. Well, in the, in the uh, old days, they had a ring that had the equivalent of that. Uh, and when you, when you pressed a seal with it, this was an authorization that it was coming from you, you know, and don't tamper with it if it's a grave or whatever it is. And uh, uh, the, the, the point I'm trying to make here is God is telling Zerubbabel, the Persian governor, who happens to be a direct descendant of King Dovid, that, that he is uh, right in line and that, and that my servant, Avdi Dovid, my servant is coming. We're talking about Moshiach. Amen. We're talking about uh, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 11. Uh, uh, my righteous servant will justify many. The uh, Zemach Tzedek, who is uh, righteous. Uh, the, the Tzedek, uh, uh, and we're talking about the, the uh, Zemach, you know, it's not Menachem, friend. It's Yehoshua, Yeshua, Zechariah chapter 6, verse 11 and 12, Zechariah chapter 3, verse 8, Ezra 3, 8. Uh, his name, the, the portent, this, this Kohen Gadol, his portentous name is a portent of the coming Mashiach. And, 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 and he says to this, uh, and it's right there in the Targum Shavim, this, this one is Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. -E He's uh, Yehoshua ben Yehotzadak. He's the Kohen Gadol. Well, at the same time that he is there on the scene, so is this Persian governor. And this governor is a direct descendant of King Dovid, and he is right there as God's signet ring because uh, this uh, Abdi... Zerubbabel ben Shaaltiel, in that day I will make thee. He's talking about how the Davidic uh, uh, lineage, the Sefer Hayachas, the, 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 uh, the pedigree, if you will, of, of Moshiach is right there in this man. Then when you get to this very narrow window of time in pre Hurban, uh, base Moshiach Judaism, where, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the base, uh, base Hamikdash, the, the temple, right there, right in that narrow window of time before 70 CE, you have not only Rav Shaul, but you have the historian Lucas. And what is he doing in Jerusalem? He is, he is getting the, the uh, genealogical records not, not just of Yosef ben Dovid, but also Miriam bat Dovid. That Miriam comes through Natan, and Yosef comes through Shlomo. And uh, this shows the impeccable uh, credentials of Mashiach. That he is Mashiach ben Dovid. And this is so very important, friend, because God is doing something. God is doing something, not just restoring the, the temple, 
but restoring the dynasty of, of David uh, in the Holy Land so that Mashiach can come. And when he does come, uh, it says, the desired of all nations. You got to look at the very uh, uh, chapter two of Haggai, verse seven. And I will shake kol goyim, all nations, and the chemdat kol hagoyim. Now, you know, we have an institute, Artists for Israel Institute. It's a Messianic Bible Institute, friend. You can study with us online. And you need to know that this translation, the Orthodox Jewish Bible, brings this out. That this word, uh, him, him dot, the, the, uh, the desire, him dot uh, ko goyim, the desire of all nations, this is a, an allusion to the Kol Himdat Yisrael. This is what Shmuel says to, 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 uh, uh, to uh, Shaul. You remember the king? His, his, him and his base, his house, his dynasty. Uh, Shmuel is saying, are, are, you, are you not, are you, is it not you? And, and of course, that's found in 1 Samuel 9.20. But... Uh, of course, he put it as a question. And God found uh, somebody better than him because he was now obeying God. So the dynasty was, was changed to the dynasty of David. And, uh, and that's what we're talking about here. That the Lord whom you seek with a capital L, Lord, Ha'adom, will suddenly come to his temple. In uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, these are all post-exilic prophets who are laying the stage, uh, they're, they're, they're setting the stage now for Moshiach to actually come. And these are the final uh, prophets of the, of the Tanakh. And we're talking about Haggai 2.7. We're talking about uh, first, first Mule, uh, uh, 1 Samuel 9.20, Malachi 3.1. And we're also talking about 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 to 4, the so-called collection journey. Because Rav Shaul is, breaking, is bringing the wealth of the nations to Yerushalayim. And you know, the, the, there, was a, there was a prophecy uh, that, that Luke writes down, because he's not just a historian, he's also a prophet. That the times of the Gentiles will not always be, friend. And uh, when you see that fig tree starting to blossom, when I was five years old, the, the, the fig tree began to blossom. 26 years later, I wrote this book, Everything You Need to Grow in My Synagogue. And you need to know, friend, that we are Pentecostals. There was a little Italian lady out in the congregation in 1974. She stood up and she gave a message in tongues. And then she gave the interpretation. And she said, in eight days... God is going to use this. And, it, and he did. Eight days later, Paul Markstrom said, okay, we're going this direction. Now, at that time, there was only one or two Messianic synagogues in the world. Now we've got about 800 of them. We got about a million Messianic Jews. We got Messianic synagogues from Fort Lauderdale to Kiev, from, from Paris to, to, uh, to Toronto. We, we've got, uh, uh, we, we have a restoration, if you will, of the mother messianic congregation that you read about in Acts chapter 21. This is all the work of God, friend. It has nothing to do with a human being. As a matter of fact, what God does very often is he holds his nose. He pulls out the, the, the stinkiest rat at the bottom of the barrel. And he, he does things through this person who is then uh, transformed and becomes a clean vessel fit for the master's use. And this is so God will, God will get the glory and no flesh will glory in his presence. In 1974, there was a, a lot of things happening. It was a momentous year for many people who are now deceased because that was the year, 1974, when uh, Richard uh, Nixon was impeached. And that was uh, the year that Alexander, uh, uh, that Solzhenitsyn uh, got the Nobel Pr uh, Peace Prize. George Harrison, the ex-Beatle, he announced his concert tour. Uh, and Mickey Mantle was uh, 
inducted into the Hall of Fame. And, uh, you know, there were even terrible things that happened that year, like Ted Bundy's victim, Debbie Kent. She suddenly disappeared in Salt Lake City. And Jean-Paul Sartre, the famous uh, atheistic ex existentialist, uh, he visited a fellow communist atheist in prison, and there was a lot of publicity. But there was very little publicity for the publication of this book, Everything You Need to Grow a Messianic Synagogue. But you see, God was getting ready to do something, and he's going to do something in these last days that even if you heard about it, you wouldn't believe it. Because God is at work now. He's, he's going to make that fig tree blossom in an unbelievable way as Messianic Jews stream in to, to the uh, kingdom of God. And the times of the Goyim are coming to a close. While the Goyim are thinking about uh, having a sex change, go, going to a tattoo parlor, uh, going to see... Uh, Pornography in, in, that's uh, actually in the uh, in the regular theaters coming from the uh, regular Hollywood studios when they're doing all of this wickedness and when uh, saber rattling of nuclear weapons is going on among these goyim, very very uh, uh, sort of under the radar, just uh, the 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 size of a man's hand, very very small. God is going to do. Great things, great things, friend. And, and, and you need to take your eyes off of that anti-gospel, uh, that uh, tol, tol do yeshu uh, mishigas, this, uh, this uh, you know, crazy thing that's just uh, slanderous and blasphemous. And you need to look at the real thing. Do you, actually, do you actually believe that Miriam Bot Dovid would not have a copy of her Davidic pedigree, that it could not be ascertained in Jerusalem, that Luke somehow couldn't get his hands on it? Do you, do you actually think that that would not be important to her, that, she, that, she, that to her father she goes right back to Natan? Do you think that Yosef Ben Dovid would not have a copy of his uh, Sefer Hayahas, his, his, uh, his genealogy. Do, do you really think that he wouldn't be interested in the fact that he, was, that he was a direct descendant of King David through Shlomo? That he wouldn't have that? And do, do you really think that, that Luke risked his life along with uh, Rav Shaul and that he would, he would fabricate this kind of thing? Do you really think that God was so incompetent God couldn't get a professional historian in there to actually do the homework and the research and interview everybody and check all of his sources and give us something that is uh, not only history but prophecy? I'm talking about the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts. Do you really think that, friend? Do you really think that, that Haggai was so unanointed that he, that he really couldn't get it right? That he didn't know what he was talking about. When he walked up to this Persian governor, Zerubbabel, who was very humbled. He was working for the nation of Persia. But he did have that genealogical link to David through his father, Shaltiel. Do you really think that Haggai couldn't get that right? That when they were building the temple, that Zechariah and, and Haggai couldn't, couldn't get their... Their, their, uh, their, their words correctly. Listen, friend, maybe in your mind it would be better if they didn't quite get it right because you don't really want to believe what Zaharia said. He said, your name, Yeshua, your name, Yeshua, is the name, the Zemach. Don't, you know, if you Google uh, uh, Zemach, Zedek, you get all this rabbinic garbage. But listen, friend, there's only one uh, there's only one Zemach. And that's the one that, that, that Zechariah pointed to. He said, you, you are the portent of the Zemach. You, Yeshua. He says, Hine ish Zemach Shemo Mo. 
Who, who am I talking about? Him, his name, not Menachem, not somebody else. We have all these uh, imposters that want to be Messiah. Friend, I'm sorry. There's only one Messiah. And how come Zechariah can see it and you can't? How come Haggai can see it and you can't? How come Luke can see it and you can't? How come these, these uh, genealogies are right there in uh, Luke chapter 3 and, and Matthew chapter 1 and you can't see it? Friend, it's because you're not saved. You're not, you're not, you don't have the heat hot shoot, the regeneration. You don't have eyes to see and ears to hear. You don't have a new heart, a lev hadash. You don't have a new spirit, a ruach hadashah. You can't look around with the eyes of the ruach hakodesh. This is a closed book. These anti-messianic uh, detractors who are uh, putting their 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 uh, their ignorant teachings on the internet. They don't even. They can't even really read this book. It is spiritual words that have to that have to be spiritually discerned. If you don't have the Ruach HaKodesh, you cannot understand the Bible. You can't make all these connections. You can't look at uh, Haggai chapter 2, verse 7, and see 1 Corinthians 16, 1 to 4, 1 Samuel 9, 20, and Malachi 3, 1. You can't do it. You can't construe the holy words of God because you don't have the operating system. It takes the Ruach HaKodesh. Don't, don't try to use an Apple operating system and read something that doesn't, some, some software that doesn't, it isn't compatible with it. Your software is not compatible with the Bible. You have a carnal mind. You need to be born again. And I'm praying right now that God will, uh, that God will provoke you to jealousy. That you'll see all these Messianic Jews. And you'll see even how God is using people from the Goyim. And you'll say, wait a minute. You'll get so upset, you'll be like Rob Shaul. You'll have to push the buttons until you have an encounter with Yeshua himself and make Teshuvah and come to a saving knowledge of uh, Moshiach ben Dovid. Can you say amen? Amen.